Hello all, this is Omar Alvarado and welcome back to All About Rush. Today's a special episode in that we're starting a new series on the channel called The Fans of Rush, Life After the Final Show, where we check up on Rush fans and see what they've been up to after Rush called it a career back in August 1st, 2015, which was their final show. Today we have a very special guest. She's the creative director of RushCon, which we'll get into in a little bit. And she was also featured as, let's say, a, a star fan, let's say, <laughs> in the Rush documentary, Time Stand Still, which chronicles Rush's last tour called R40. It's my privilege to welcome to the show, Jillian Marianovich. Jillian, Hello. welcome. Hello. How are you doing? I'm okay. To be honest, I'm uh, at the tail end of my COVID, my time oh. in the COVID chair. Um, yeah. I, I'm so pissed because we made it two years. You know, I live in, in New York, so it's everywhere. I, I followed all the rules. I'm triple vaxxed, but somehow it yeah. snuck in last week. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I fortunately, at least I don't know if I got it. I know my three brothers did get it. Um, and just, I know friends that have even passed away from it. So Ooh, it's yeah. affected us you know, in all different ways. But, you know, fortunately, we're, we have an immunity to it now. Hope that uh, <coughs> it carry us along, right? <laughs> yeah, let's hope. Let's hope yeah, this is the last hope. of it. Yeah. All right. So um, let's kind of start from the beginning. Like, I, I'm a, I assume you've been asked this hundreds of times. Uh, but for the layman out there, how were you introduced to the music of Rush. The, the music of Rush. Um, that was during high school, I think, which is for a lot of people. It's like that's sort of like a vulnerable time in one's life, you know, figuring out friendships and society and what you want to be when you grow up and romance and this and that. And I, uh, I was in band and I was super involved and I played drums. And so oh, um, I nice. drums too. amazing. <laughs> um, and so there was uh, some boy in my high school that wanted to go to a concert. And so I'm like, yeah, I'll go see Rush. Don't know who they are. So I'm going to pretend that I'm, you know, their biggest fan. And surprisingly, it turns out I was, I just didn't know it yet. Yeah. So I went to my first Roll the Bones show that was in Milwaukee in November of 1991. And uh, the bunnies and the, the Getty and the skulls and the, you know, it just, it changed my life. I walked out just like a, my DNA had been changed. That's pretty awesome. That was my yeah. second. My, my, that was my second tour. I saw them. Hold your fire was my first one. You skipped Presto. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, I had a family already, and um, you know, it, <laughs> even to go to pro roll the bones was you know a big challenge. <laughs> but I ended up taking my youngest brother and a friend. There, but it was obviously a, a great show. Yeah. So so now I know what your first concert was. So how many times have you seen them? So I used to be the, the kid that categorized, I saved all my ticket stubs, but like I, I sort of lost track as I got further down the line. It's probably in like the eighties or nineties. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I've been, I, meaning, I, yeah. I've been meaning to talk to folks who've seen them a lot. So I got yeah. a two for one here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe not even that many. I just like, you know, for, um, when I was younger in college, I like took a semester off and just followed them all up and down the east coast for I think it was vapor trails so I knocked off a bunch of then but then like you know my job kind of got in the way it you know but you know and then in in it kind of depends on how old you are and when you got into the band mm -hmm. because if you were if you're older then you got that big section of time you know when they were touring constantly and doing 300 shows a year yeah. but then for me like we five years were taken out during the vapor trail the test for echo vapor trails gap yep and then from there, they toured a ton. So like I kind of made up for it towards the end. Nice, nice. I, I didn't get to uh, do the, the, the backpacking <laughs> per se with them. Uh, I did get to see them with my son the last four or five tours. Nice. And, and all he ever saw was Rush. So that the, the, the bar was set really high. How old was he? When he, saw <laughs> he, was, the first he was 11 on okay. his Snakes and Arrows tour. That was the first one. It's funny. It was a really rainy day. It was outdoors. And he was like, oh, I hate it here. This is terrible. And then when Limelight kicks in, it was the first song that, that happened to be his favorite song. He's like, nice. this is the best day ever. It's like 30 yes. seconds in. So yeah, he had, he had a good time. That's awesome. Yeah. So let's transition a little bit forward now. Now you're the creative director of RushCon, right? Yes. So uh, I figured you'd have the inside scoop because you're <laughs> involved with it. So uh, what is RushCon for those who don't know? And what kinds of things does a creative director do great there. questions so RushCon is basically a fan convention it's like if 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 rush ha has like it's it's like the official fan club and we would put on an event once a year or sometimes twice a year 
Um, especially it started um, by these two women, uh, Eddie and Fred, they have unique names, um, but it was, it was right after um, Tess Fereco, like the, the hiatus. Yeah. And this was be- way before um, Facebook and super internet stuff. Like there was bulletin boards, but, and emails, but there wasn't yeah. this big online community. And so <clears throat> they were kind of like, Hey, we have, we don't know what's happening with the band, but let's get some friends together and <clears throat> excuse me, let's get some friends together and sort of like, see what that would feel like, you know, and what would, where would be a good place for that would be Toronto, obviously where they're from. Sure. And so I got involved at that first one and it sort of, um, that was in 20, 20 sorry, 2001, uh, we're 20 mm. year, 22 years. So yeah, there was, um, and then, so it kind of snowballed from there and it became this annual thing. And luckily they were touring enough that it made sense for us to throw an event when there was a show in town. And, um, yeah, it, it became this annual like pilgrimage road trip thing for a lot of people to come up to Toronto and see not only them play it in their hometown, which is like an experience of itself, but then to mm-hmm. also, you know, that the city is lousy with Rush landmarks, you know, it's where the album covers were shot and, you know, and <clears throat> they have a star in the Canadian Walk of Fame and they've got all the concert venues they've played at. And then of course their record label Anthem SRO at their former office was just like, it's like a museum of Rush stuff and they would yeah they would let us tour that. So it was, it, it's a whole deal. And it, um, it became really, really, really special. And, uh, you know, towards the end, um, when they stopped touring, it, we weren't sure if we could get people to come out. Um, cause it's, it's an expensive trip, you know, to go to Canada yeah. from wherever. And so, you know, it's a big ask for people to be like, Hey, spend thousands of dollars to come hang out with us. So, we put it, we put it on hiatus a little bit just because the band was in retirement. We didn't, we, we just needed to sort of pause for a bit and then mm-hmm. Neil passed away and then the pandemic. And then here we are. <laughs> yeah. A lot of things just seem to happen uh, like, you know, together and just put an, an abrupt halt on a lot of things. So, um, but even during the time that Rush was touring and there were years that they didn't, there seemed to be a lot of things to do related to Rush. Yeah, I mean, we were pretty lucky that I think almost every year, at least every other year, there was a show. But for the years where there wasn't, we always would have like guest speakers that worked for the band or knew the band well or um, toured with the band. So they would come and, you know, give us presentations and slideshows and tell us all these amazing road stories. Because like Rush has been with their same crew the entire time. So like they've got you know, Howard Unger leader and Jack secret, the, the dudes that have been with them from the beginning. So they have the stories, yeah. the stories. Um, and they still, I'm sure they still have stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, they'll bring, they'll crack open their own personal archives of photos and crazy shit that, <clears throat> you know, happens uh, many years ago. And then we usually would have a tribute band play and that's always super fun. And yeah, we would have a whole day full of like games and, 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 you know, trivia and, and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a whole like two and a half day festival of Russianists. That sounds pretty awesome. I would, it's I would the best. Like how, to... come, how come you haven't come? <laughs> it's that family thing, but I think now my kids are out and, you know, I'm a little more flexible. So, you know, if there's a, uh, an event scheduled sometime in the future, I may, uh, I may make it a, you know, make it a trip. Well, fingers crossed. I mean, you know, it's, it's been strange because like the band ended their basically broke up, whatever, after after that last Mm -hmm. show. And we were just kind of like, oh God. But then we heard that the, um, we know that they shot a lot of the documentary at our event. So we knew Mm -hmm. that that was going to be a new fun thing. And so then when we knew the movie was premiering, we built an event around that in Toronto we had all the filmmakers come to the premiere and like all of the band's family was there. It was the best. Um, So that was the last time we got together really. Um, And, you know, we're looking and and we're looking for a reason to do it, but like, we need to find like a thing to do, you know, yeah, it's kind of hard just to be like, Hey, everyone come hang out in Toronto. It's gotta be like a thing. So we're desperately wanting to, we just need to wait for the right time. Yeah. I can, you know, those are the circumstances and, you know, time, time catches up to all of us, as they say, as we've seen. Um, I'm going to ask you a little bit about the Time Standstill documentary. 
Mm -hmm. I have a couple of questions. Though. First, I want to ask, um, have you ever met any of the members of the band in, uh, personally? Yeah. Which one? All three all, of them or? All three. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Now, was it like when you were like a Rush Con related or um, like a meet and greet or? A couple, some meet and greets here and there. And then like a couple more casual things. Like I, whenever I am <clears throat> around them, I never present myself as like a fan. I'm always just kind of like, no, man, I'm the cool girl in the corner. You're not impressing me. I'm not nervous as I'm wetting my pants, you yeah, know, like, yeah. <laughs> so I always try to be super chill and super just like, no, I belong here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, I've met them and, you know, I um, just try to have normal conversations with them and not talk about Rush. <laughs> or yeah, Rush that's, on. that's the thing. I think every Rush fan, they've, kind of fantasize if I were to meet them how would I behave I want to be cool you know and very people very few people met have met Neil you know right. the, the other two guys are more obviously amicable in that in that regard yeah uh, but um yeah that's pretty cool that you got to meet all three of them yeah. yeah um yeah I'm I cherish those moments I'm I'm not the type to post photos of it really or yeah. you know like that's it's really it's really like a personal um thing that you know is was really special to me yeah that sounds cool mm -hmm. all right so now um the time stands still documentary i'm yes. curious about something okay um how how did that happen how did the producers of time stand still contact you or were you surprised so yeah. rushcon is pretty well known to the band's management and mm -hmm. like we have a really good relationship with them so they reach out to me you know hey can you tweet this did you hear about this can you do this you know so were I'm in very good contact with them and we knew that the documentary I had heard rumblings that like they were going to do this documentary about the last tour and I'm like oh that's awesome and then I heard more that they were really going to do fan stuff and I'm like oh shit you guys got to come to Rushcon like here I'm handing you this on a silver platter like whatever you need this is this can help your story and um Alan who is Getty's brother who mm -hmm. is the director and the producer wonderful wonderful human um he was super into it and <clears throat> we got to talking about it and you know then my story kind of like became a little bit more interesting just because of like my job and whatever so that sort of um shifted a little you know and um it was funny because he called me and he's like hey um I really needed to see the movie before it comes out and I'm like why and he's like you're kind of in it a lot and I'm like oh <laughs> shit you know like I I had no I mean obviously I sat for interviews so I knew what uh what the content was but yeah, you're you know, just I, providing content they right. decide later what they want to do with it yeah right I didn't realize they were gonna go because I know that they they did similar interviews with several people um and some of them got cut so you know it was it was I went up there to watch it and I was terrified the whole time that who knows but you know it came out great and I was super super excited and proud to be involved yeah yeah, that, that would be exciting. Um, yeah. And, you know, you're the first person I reached out to from that video because of the fact that you seem to be the more outspoken person, you know, <laughs> whether it was because they chose it that way or maybe there are others that were, you know, it just worked. I get, I think it worked out really well because the they flow just of wanted the... Obama. They just wanted Obama. <laughs> right. Yeah, he must have listened. To... She must have blasted Rush in the White House at least one time. <laughs> I mean, I absolutely did. I absolutely did. But, you know, it's funny because like I when they when I was I mean, I it was while I was working at the White House that I was on the phone with them, like planning this and like, look, Alan, like I am more than happy for you guys to use my story, but prepare for some backlash like. <laughs> you know it's and you know he's like I don't care bring it on we love it so yeah that's cool I mean those yeah. are the those are the the personal things you know they look genuine and people yeah. appreciate that and you know it's for us it's just another Rush fan and that's their story and every Rush fan has their own story and they're all interesting yeah so, you know that's one of the reasons I started this channel because even though there's a lot of groups and there's a there are YouTube not that many YouTube channels actually related to Rush but you know I'm just one person and we all have these stories, you know, and they're all interesting. That's why there's like, it's going to be years of years of rush still. Totally. Uh, and enjoyed. it's just like the miracle that this band has brought so many people together, you know, from yeah. all walks of life and all places. Um, you know, it's funny. I tell my friends, like 
no matter where I go in the country, I can point to someone I know who, if my car broke down, I could call them, you know, yeah, just be, right. I may never have met them, but I know they're a Rush fan. So yeah. And you have my contact information, you know, yeah. I am. <laughs> right. exactly. Um, well, if you don't mind, I want to play you a little clip of the documentary, just a minute okay. long. Yep. I'm going to yeah. go unmute. Yep. And then, uh, I'll let you know, you tell me what, what you think about it. I haven't really processed what it's going to be like for me to be at the last show. I'm just full on in planning mode. Rush on! <laughs> Maybe when the lights go on and I'm in my seat and I'm finally thinking like, oh my God, is this the last time I'm going to jump out of my seat when Getty runs on stage? Is this the last time? Then it'll start hitting me. It's just going to feel like there's a whole um, lack of like progression in my life, you know, to have this thing stop that I used to look forward to so much. This is so important to me and has been such a part of who I've been for so long <laughs> that, you know, closing this chapter is going to be sad, but good. <laughs> I'm sort of in denial on the whole thing. I think once I experience it, it'll I'll have to let it go, you know? Aw, what a baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was actually one of my favorite parts of the whole documentary. Yeah? How come? I think I, Because I think every Rush fan related to that. And, okay, so now they're done. Like, there's so much an intrinsic part of our life. So, so that's what I want to ask you. So what was your life like? like right after that show and up till now, kind of like Rush related, you know, how, how has it been for you? So it's almost like a therapy session. <laughs> no, it's, it's, you know, it was what, 2000, what year was that? It was two years 2000, ago? The, the, docu the, the, the last night was 2016, right? 2015. 2015. Yeah. Shit. That's a long time. Yeah. It's time flies it's already been about <clears throat> six years or something like that I mean my seven job was really busy so like I could really jump back into that and that kind of um I was very busy and the, there was an it was an election year so it was crazy like I my emotions were right, yeah. dist I was distracted <laughs> mm -hmm. um and then there was still hope that oh they'll do a one-off show or they'll still record or whatever whatever um and then I think we all just kind of like okay I think this might be real and then <clears throat> um I think it was probably four years then when we got the worst news mm -hmm. in our lives probably yeah. um and then everybody knows where they were when they heard the news yeah um yeah and you know that was a whole nother thing. Like I couldn't listen to Rush for a really long time. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, it was so raw <clears throat> and it was so, it was unexplained pain because it's not like he was my dad or a brother. Like he yeah. was just this. It's weird. Yeah. So weird. Yeah. So weird. And, you know, it was, it was hard to verbalize that, like the grief that we were all experiencing for someone we didn't know but like that we loved and it was like a you know so but again that was a really really busy time in my life as well I was on another campaign so like mm -hmm. I didn't have a ton, ton of time and then right into the pandemic so yeah very isolating very yeah. horrible winter wait it was that was it was happened in March was it it was in January when January okay, January yes yeah yes. so horrible dark Cold, dark winter yeah. mm -hmm. where um and so fuck that was just the worst and it was yeah. so hard and had rush con but had there not been a pandemic we would have immediately gotten together and done a memorial or a concert or whatever yeah. we just couldn't That's right so we did some online things and that helped a little but like we just i i'm still grieving and like you know Taylor Hawkins passing just a couple days ago brought up yeah. a ton. Yeah, because they're ton. so related. Yeah. And knowing 
I don't know, just getting that tweet and seeing it and being like, oh God, this is bringing up all the things. Yeah. And I didn't believe it until I saw the tweet from the Foo Fighters official right. you know, account. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I still, it, Rush has taken on that listening to their music is a different thing for me now. It's like, fuck, I don't want to cry. Shit. Sorry. Um, no, it's okay. <laughs> like, you know, normally it's the music you put on when you're brushing your teeth in the morning and you need to get fucking psyched for the day, you know, but like, I can't, it's not casual for me anymore. It's like such, it's so painful because yeah. like, it's, it's such a tremendous loss. Yeah. In many, in many respects, because, you know, the music has stopped. You know, one of the members is not there anymore. And, you know, you, you, it's now, now it's like we're seeing how our beloved two, what are they doing? Are they okay? You know, are they doing something exciting? Are they doing something interesting? And, you know, us Rush fans, we just want to know that they're okay and that they're yeah. you know, living their life the way they want to. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, obviously they'll never be okay, but like it seems, mm -hmm. you know, Alex is making music and yeah, <laughs> Getty's doing projects and stuff, but like it, that music now is so much more precious it's like prophetic <laughs> yeah yeah it, it is just the most precious gem and we had it and we've seen it and it's yep. gone i mean we still have the records yes everyone says that but like yeah i don't know man it sucks <laughs> it, it, yeah it's a it's a monument and you know, fortunately, they were very busy guys, and we get to benefit from it because it's just so much material and so much live stuff. Now the moving pictures, new, a new a concert from that tour is coming yes. out, and I jumped on that. I'm I can't wait to hear that. Um, but yeah, I think it's you know, when 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 the music stopped, you know, like the song like Bravado says, and music stopped. Um, you know, I was I was kind of like in the air, like I didn't know what to think. And like, like a calm came over me. It's like, you know, they've, they've done enough. They're good. I don't even need to see them anymore. I mean, they, they, they've accomplished everything. I want them to just be whatever they want and whatever they chose to do, I'd be happy with it. So, you know, uh, if, if Alex is happy in a new band and not even wanting to play any rush songs anymore, I'm okay with that. I mean, we yeah. can still hear it. And, you know, if someone wants to talk to him about it and he, and he's willing to, he'll do it. It's not like he won't, but you know, it's not his his biggest thing right now. It's always been with them. Like whatever they're doing now is the most exciting thing. Like yeah. what they did in the, I don't want to talk about that. Right, right. <laughs> just progress, progress and progress, you know, whatever's coming. Yeah. So, well, I really appreciate uh, Jillian, your thoughts on this. Um, it's good to share these, these moments with other Rush fans and I'm glad I got to know you. Um, I do have a couple of other questions that yeah, are more, a little more fun. <laughs> okay. Right? So what is your favorite Rush album? Roll the bones, hands down. Roll the bones. Album, it's album, and it's very controversial, um, <laughs> but it's the album that got me into them. It's the album artwork is the best, and like I'm a you know I'm a designer, creative person, so like that the album covers are a yeah. lot of it for me. And roll the bones is like the best, and yeah. that that yeah, one I, is, I stand yeah. by my choice. Yeah, <laughs> um, that that album came out a year after my daughter was born, and she grew up hearing that record. So mm -hmm. her favorite Rush song is Dreamline. Not mine. So, yeah, Dreamline's yeah. amazing. That, yep. as the kids say, that song slaps. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> so, okay, I don't know. This might be a more difficult question. I don't know. What Least is your favorite, favorite album? No, oh. but you can tell me. <laughs> Snakes and Arrows, garbage. <laughs> I know. I have a friend of mine who loves that album. Wow. So we, when he wow. sees this, it's gonna have a. Well, see, I'm, I'm curious to see what he says. <laughs> what about your favorite song? Can't. Don't. I could maybe <laughs> do top two of every. I could give you maybe a top five, but like, okay, roll the bones, resist, time stands still, Xanadu, <laughs> so I told you it was really hard, <laughs> subdivisions, but like, yeah. that'll change, you know? Yeah, it does change. Yeah, but my, time stand yeah. still, roll the bones, and resist. I would say are always going to be. Sorry, my cats are very participatory. That's okay. My, my cat is right, right <laughs> there. Yeah. Um, but those will be my top three. You know. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Xanadu. My the live performance from Exit Stage Left is my favorite Rush song. Nice. Right nice. now. 
and signals is my favorite right record. yeah okay yeah. signals is amazing yeah so they're all amazing in their own way they all have their except for snakes and arrows person. which is garbage <laughs> i i do admit that that record it, it's kind of like it's like off on a tangent somewhere that record it's kind of yeah. like it's like almost another rush <laughs> you know um when i when i heard is like and the tour and the the concert and the vision everything was really like so weird, weird. so weird yeah. I'm, you know, I'm just glad they played all their other stuff too, <laughs> right? Exactly. Um, well, I think, uh, Jillian, on that note, uh, I, I want to thank you very much for accepting my invitation. Of course, of course. I'm always happy to talk about Rush. Yes, it was a pleasure. And as Getty always used to say, I hope to see you again sometime. You as well. <laughs> all right. Um, once again, thanks to Jillian Marianovich for joining us on the All About Rush channel. We really hope you enjoy this chat and we'll see you in the next installment. Take care, everyone. Well, I appreciate what you didn't ask me, which is why are there so few women Rush fans? Because that's the first question I get and I hate it. That's funny you bring that up because if you look at every Rush concert video, all of the all the official releases, there's women in all of them. Well, they stage that and they focus on that. But like, <laughs> I mean, I guess because, oh, there's a woman here. Let's put. Yeah. I mean, no, I've 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 seen it asked a bunch of times mm -hmm. and they it's, just aren't there aren't as there many, just aren't no? and, who, and yeah. who cares i don't speak for all women yeah um I mean. and you know like the rush cons run by all women so like obviously i didn't know that and i'm like oh that means that there you go i mean yeah exactly so but thank where, you for where not were the guys <laughs> yeah the guys couldn't get it done is what they, they would just be a bunch of dudes at the bar and that's not fun um but yeah, thank you for not asking me that. Yeah, sure. <laughs>